In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to solve simulink library in order to solve a system of ordinary differential equations. Uh, here I have two different ODEs that I uh, like to solve, and I'm going to use simulink. So I'm going to start a new um, model in simulink. And in this model, if you see, I need to make two different equations. The very first thing that we need to do is to write the highest um, derivative of each uh, equation with respect to the rest of the component. I have already done this and I have it here. And if you can see the highest order that I have in each one of these equations is the, the second order. So I need to have x, x dot and x double x. So I need to have two different uh, integration, two uh, integration for each one of these equations. All of those blocks that we used are scattered in the Simulink library. Most of them are in the commonly used block. These are the blocks that uh, you uh, usually need to work with. Okay, so I'm grabbing and putting two different integrators here. The very first one is x double dot. Then the output of this integration will be x dot. And the output of the second integration will be x. Okay, so I'm going to copy the two blocks that I have and put them here to use them as a while. Uh, basically, we don't need to write the name of these signals, but it's a good practice to follow because it's going to help us to understand the system and it will be easier to make these two equations. Okay. Uh, if you double click on each one of these integrators, you will see that we have initial condition. So this is x double dot. When we make the integration, the initial condition is the initial velocity, x dot at time equal to zero. Let's say it is equal to 1, for example, and we have a zero displacement. Okay, so my initial condition for a displacement will be zero. And for the second equation, let's say that the initial velocity in the y direction is equal to negative 1. So I change this one to negative 1, and the initial displacement is plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to change this one to plus 1. Now I need to make these two equations. We start from x double dot. X double dot is equal to one constant multiplied by this term. This term has four different components, which are added to each other. So I'm going to use the block sum, uh, sum to make this addition. Uh, by default, sum has only two inputs, but what I need is four input. So if I double click, I can add different input. The interesting thing about this block is that you can also include the sign. So if instead of positive sign, I put the negative sign, I will have item 1 plus item 2 minus item 3 plus item 4. I always use summation so it is simple to use. Another thing is we can also change the item shape. It's easier to work with rectangular, so I'll change it to the rectangular. I can also change the size of my block. Okay. Uh, let's look at this part first. So this is the x double dot that we had. Okay, so my equation is negative 2x dot. This is x dot, so I need to multiply it by a gain. I'm holding control right now and pressing the R in order to save my block. Okay, if I multiply this thing by negative 2, then the output will be negative 2x. So let's make sure that we put the here I have negative 2x dot. The second item is negative 3y dot. This is y dot, so I need another gain in order to multiply it by a constant. Okay, so this is negative 3. And connect it here. Input is y dot, multiply by negative 3, I have negative 3y dot. Then I have negative x and negative 2y, so I need two more gain. The first one is negative 1. So here I have negative x. Let's put it up here. And the second one is negative 2. So here I have negative 2y. make just this part of the block and we need to multiply it by one half in order to make x double dot. The final gain and the 
value is equal to one half. Okay, we are done with the first part of the equation for x double dot. Now we need to make y double dot. Y double dot doesn't have this uh, factor, so it's just a summation of four different inputs. So I'm just going to copy the summation block and put it here and connect it to my y double dot. Okay? I have negative x dot. This is x dot. I'm going to use again here. It is negative 1. And it should be connected to x dot. Okay? It can be anywhere. Now I have negative 2y dot that I need to make. I'm going to copy this, rotate it. So this is y dot, so if I make this one negative 2, and then I have a negative 2y dot. Okay? I also need negative 2y. I already have y negative 2y here, so I can just use the one that I already exist. So the last component is a function of time, sine of pi t. All those blocks which have the time are in the source. Okay, sine wave. If you click here, you'll see that we have amplitude, frequency, phase, and bias. When you check it here, you see that the amplitude is equal to 1, frequency is equal to 5, and phase and bias are equal to 0. So I need to change frequency here. Okay, and then connect it. So the second equation is also done. Now I need to plot x and y. So in order to plot, I can use the sync command here. So I put one scope here and another scope here. So I have y and I have x. Okay. Make sure that you double click on the each one of the scope and remove this uh, limit data point you last 5,000 here. Basically, just instead of plotting every single point, you just uh, plot a couple of the points last 5,000 points. So we just remove it to make sure that we plot everything. I can also adjust the length of the uh, simulation. I put, for example, 40 seconds and run it. And now I can look at the two plots that I have. Okay. You can also change the resolution of the time. If you want to change the resolution, the number of points that we have here, you need to come uh, to the model configuration parameters, go there. The stop time is 40 seconds. Instead of a variable step, you go to the fixed step. This is an initial value problem um, that you're going to see in the couple, next couple of lectures, especially diff there are different uh, OD solvers, Jean Gekuta, for example, that you're going to see in the next couple of lectures. But I'm just uh, not going to change anything and leave those parts for the, uh, those lectures. Uh, now here we can change the fixed step size. Let's say we want to go with one millisecond. Set it up, and now I can look at my scope. Remember the initial condition for the displacement. Here we had zero. Here we had one. So we get the same initial condition. We basically d even don't need to have two different scope. We can delete one of them. And if you like, you can have two different inputs in this scope. Just click in the general part and increase the number of axes to two. Now we'll have two different inputs. I can plot y and x in the same place. So for your reports, it's easy to just come here and print your, your plot uh, and just submit it with your report.